Hi. For rambling, for roving, for football or courting, or drinking black porter as fast as you feel. In all your days roving, you'll find none so jovial as the muskery sportsman the bout eighty quill. No, I haven't gone off my rocker. Um, what I want to talk to you about today is the results of research on odd bits and pieces of, of Irish history. The man this song is about, Tady Quill, it turned out from, I stumbled across the fact when I was doing um, uh, the census corrections that he was a real person, okay? He wasn't uh, a muskery sportsman um, and he wasn't unmatched in rambling and roving, but he was a real person. So I went off and started unraveling it. And the story of what, how I, the mistakes I made and the, what I uncovered, um, I thought might be interesting. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so first of all, let me share my screen. This is the starting point. Um, this is a Wikipedia entry on Tady Quill. And it says here that he was a poor laborer, occasional cattle jobber. He did odd jobs for the local farmers. Um, he was no athlete, apparently teetotal, and sleep slept in barns. He died a bachelor. Johnny Tong Gleason engaged Tady as a labourer. However, instead of paying him, he immortalised Tady with this ballad, which pleased Tady no end. OK, the, the picture in this is, is quite vivid. The implication is of a, a bashful bachelor um, blushing at this, this sort of Corconian Popeye that he's been turned into, the superhero of, of hurling and, and courting and drinking. Um, so, all right. As ever, scepticism grips me and I decide, let's let's go and see what we can find out about this, this Tady Quill. So born about 1860. The first thing I found um, when I went off looking for him was a uh, headstone. In loving memory of Timothy Quill, Baal Tady, Carigola, Balnagri died 28th of October, 1932. His brother Daniel, Daniel's wife Ellen, and then a Patrick Quill who died in 2000. The headstone is obviously erected in the 2000s. So, you know, always with headstones, there's a certain amount of hearsay involved. And in, in fact, the townland name is Carigagola. It's not Carigola. Um, but one thing that's clear from this, okay, is that Tady was Timothy. This, is, this was his, his official name. And it became known as Tady, apparently in that part of, the, of Cork, Tady is a, a, a very common variant. Okay, first thing to do then is uh, we have the approximate date of birth off to the baptismal registers with me. And I found this in Ahina uh, or Ahina Parish, January the 4th, 1860. And you can see here, Timothy. Timothy in Carrigagulla. Timothy of Patrick Quill and Catherine Kelleher, um, godparents Timothy Quill and Mary Buckley. All right, that's that's a good um, odds-on candidate. Um, the next thing is going back to the the headstone, the death in 1932. Okay, so away with me to IrishGenealogy.ie and the deaths and. Where is the death, death of Timothy Quill in 1932? There we go. Death of Timothy Quill in 1932. Okay, it's in Macroom, which is the area where Carrigagull is located. Um, he's, the place of death is given as Carrigafuca, so slightly different. Timothy Quill, 71 years old in 1932. That's about right for somebody born in 1860, well within the margin of error, but he's down as a widower. OK, so maybe the story of the bashful bachelor is not true. Wouldn't it be nice to find out that he he were actually married and had children and um, was nothing like the, 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 the individual in the Wikipedia entry? So um, and he's the death is reported by a Daniel Quill. OK, on the headstone, we had a Daniel as well. OK, excellent. So he's a widower. So he got married. So there's a marriage record. So 
off I go and have a look for the marriage record. And here is the marriage of a Timothy Quill, labourer, good so far, uh, Kill Martin. Okay, it's in, in McCroom Union. And the father is Patrick Quill, farmer, so it matches with the baptism. Um, excellent. Kill Martin. One of the things about um, the Thades, this there is a 1901 return for him as a, a farm labourer in, in a house in Anaganahy. Um, but there's nothing there from in 1911, no sign. So this could be an explanation. Kilmartin is one of those townlands that has been omitted from the online version of the 1911 census. So we have all these facts fitting together. We have the date of death. We have the, um, the fact that he's, uh, okay, excellent. Off we go to um, newspaper reports. Okay, the, the search Cork newspapers, irishnewsarchive.com. Um, and let's see what comes up for Thady Quill. The earliest thing that comes up is 1932. And you get this Timothy Quill of Carrigagulla, who is reputed to have been the prototype of the hero, was laid to rest in the Macro in Macroom New Cemetery on Sunday last. The ballad, which was very popular, and it is was very popular, people of a certain vintage, um, my vintage that is, will know it very well. But look at the date of this. This is November the 5th, 1932. Okay, so he was laid to rest last Sunday. So it looks to me as if this date is accurate. So what's the date of death on the, the death record? The death of Timothy? Um, the, sorry, this one here. He is the 30th of January, 1932. Okay, 30th of January, 1932. Somebody who died in January is not going to be buried in October. Um, so this is the wrong person, no doubt. So back to irishgenealogy.ie and extend the search outside 1932. And this emerges in 1933. Okay. The 28th of October, 1932 is the date of death. Timothy Quill, bachelor, 73, labourer, probably heart disease. Ellen Quill, sister-in-law, present at death, Carragagulla. Okay. This is obviously the right person. Okay. And he is a bachelor. Why is he registered in 1933? Because the death was registered in January 1933 and Irish genealogy indexes the things by the date of registration, not the date of the event. And that's something worth keeping in mind if you're searching on it. Um, you know, if, if somebody is born in November or December uh, of one year, their birth very easily can be registered in, in the following year. So keep that in mind. Anyway, that's an aside. Okay, so he, he was a bachelor. There is a, a question, though. There is no sign of the man. As I said, he's there in 1901. There's no sign of him in 1911. Um, also, there's a question. I, I went back and I went through the, the, the baptismal records and found children. So there, there are seven, seven or eight children. Um, where are they all in 1911? Where is, where is Timothy Tady in 1911? Why is the only person, so when you search, they, they um, let me go to Carrigagulla and go to the 1911 return for it. And I'm going to do it the, the best way I know how, by going to the website and going in, um, searching for Carrigagulla with, with lots and lots of wildcards. And there it is, Carrigagulla, civil parish of McCroom. We go to Carrigagulla. We go to the 1911 return for Carrigagulla. There it is. Where is there? Are there quills? There's a quill. And there they are. There's Patrick, the father who appears in the baptismal record, and Daniel, the, the, the man born in 1878. Okay. Why is Daniel the only one there? The standard tradition, a very strong tradition in Ireland, was that the eldest son was the one in line for the, 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 the farm to, to inherit the, the home place. So why, why is Thady not there? Why is Daniel there? Why is there nobody else there? And that, that's a slightly bigger question as well. But potential reasons why somebody might not be in a census. Um, 
They might be in a hospital with only their initials recorded. They might be one of these places that were left out altogether, also possible, or they could be in prison. Always worth checking out the prison records. So um, let's have a look, see at um, what came up when I managed, when I went into the prison records. This is Cork Prison, 1903. And here you have Timothy Quill. Okay, you, is he the right one? Yes, Ahina, that's the Catholic parish, working in Rylan. His, his next of kin is Patrick Quill of Carrigagulla McCroom. So definitely the right person. Um, anything else of interest in here? Um, under the, the distinguishing marks, marks on person, um, again, before they took mug shots, and the distinguishing coarse looking chap. Well, okay. Um, as I say, I, I wonder if it's possible to sue, uh, for his family to sue Cork Prison for, um, for slander. Anyway, what he's in for is assault, um, and he gets 14 days for it. Okay, are there any other um, prison records? There is this in 1884. Um, here he is, Timothy Quill, again, Ahina McCroom, farmer's son, same, and he's in there with a few other people for firing at and wounding one John Creed. Okay. The best way of finding out what was exactly was happening here is to go to the newspapers. So again, irishnewsarchive.com, and we go to the Cork Examiner, um, June the 11th, 1884, the recent shooting case at Darmour. 11 prisoners discharged, there were 21 people in court, 11 of them discharged, 12 returned for trial, including Jeremiah Duggan, Jeremiah Carroll, Michael Connors, and Timothy Quill. So what was this about? If you read on through the, the, whole, the whole article, which I'm not going to, you'll be glad to hear, um, it turns out that this man, John Creed, um, according to the defence, at least, um, was involved in a cattle raid um, for some of the people who were on trial. And what they were doing was trying to get their, their cattle back. And they went with a gun. So what you have, all in all, in this is... Uh, Somebody who was not exactly a bashful bachelor, I think. Somebody who was um, well capable of ganging up with people, of firing guns, who was a bit of a jailbird, um, maybe not quite the respectable person who would inherit the father's farm. Um, but in any case, uh, certainly not the, 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 the bashful, the bashful tady of the, of the Wikipedia entry. Um, other things, again, that came up on the, the, the there is, for example, um, this, the Dictionary of Irish Biography, to their eternal credit, have an entry for Timothy. Um, one of the, it, it's tall, exceptionally strong, a good bowl player, though otherwise unremarkable. Having done some work for Johnny Tong Gleeson, a Ryland farmer who was a noted musician and balladeer, he asked to have a ballad written about him as payment. Aha. This is quite different to the notion of, of Johnny Tong Gleeson fobbing him off for work with a ballad instead of paying him. This is Timothy Tady asking to be immortalised. So again, a difference to the, the, the Wikipedia entry, somebody who was a bit more in control of his own destiny, um, or at least... Um, a, a more assertive about it than, than the Wikipedia entry gives credit for. There are other things as well. I mean, they, they, if you're interested in Johnny Tong Gleeson, there's a, there's a book here, um, a biography written by uh, one of his, his collateral relatives, uh, uh, a James Chisman. And one of the, th the pictures that emerges from that is not of a prosperous farmer, again, fobbing off the, the, the poor landless labourer. Um, this man seems to have been a bit of a feckless wanderer, balladeer, um, storyteller, um, and it, very interesting in himself. And more than anything else, I think an illustration of the fact that I hope this talk has, has shown you um, in spades that once you start pulling on these threads, it's pretty much impossible to stop. Okay, I wish you happy thread pulling, and I, I hope uh, 
I hope I didn't frighten the horses too much with the song at the start. Thank you for listening.